Hi Jen, how about some coffee? It's your power off. This coffee's fantastic. Uh, I made it with intention, Jen. It's like simple things. If you break it down into steps and you pay attention to every step, it can take on uh, greater significance uh, and hopefully uh, a greater value to your life. I know what it's like to grind beans by hand. I know what it feels like. And I could even uh, time it to watching the water boil and listening to the sound of the propane and watching the kettle start to shift as the water starts to move. And those simple things uh, give me joy and I have control over those simple things. That's what makes them so great and so valuable. I mean, that uh, my making coffee over a propane stove with hand ground, hand ground beans is uh, it's way better than those giant 3D TVs or um, I don't know, fancy car or something like that. I th Jen, I wanted to talk about your video you made and I guess I'll just touch on the points and move on, see where that goes. Um, yeah, you find your house uh, kind of bothers you. You'd like to change some things, like carpet, paint, and stuff like that. There's like wires and bulbs that bother you. Um, but you can do something. Like you, you might not be able to do what you want, um, but you can do something that's close. Like if there's a wire bothering you, um, and there's no electricity flowing to that wire, um, you could cover it up. Like if it's hanging in the ceiling, how about, uh, how about hanging a painting, a picture, uh, a mural, anything, something that covers it. Get it, stand up on something, affix something over it. And a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times like people like want to throw money at, a, at something to make them happy about it, um, but sometimes effort is, is better than, I mean, you can like imagine like paying somebody to like, you know, do something for you, but then imagine you trying to figure out how to do it yourself, or if not exactly what you want to do, something close to it. Is that a deer? Oh, it's a bunch of deer. All right, I gotta go, I'll be right back. All right, Jen, small break to uh, get my dog from chasing deer. And uh, luckily, uh, pointers, do a lot of their hunting, so to speak, uh, with uh, scent from their scent in the air. They don't smell the ground as much, so he went straight to where they were all, all the deer were laying down, even though you could clearly see the deer running away. And I was able to collect him without too much trouble. He's getting he's getting wise as he gets older. All right, so I guess we were talking about your house when we left off. So like about paying people to do things, like hanging cupboards and things like that. Like you could figure something out. Um, hang, putting some shelves up. Um, yeah. For instance, like I go on a lot of walks in places like this, out in the nowhere. But there's still like, like utility people and things like that working out here. And I just found a gigantic hammer. Like it's it's really, it's like the hammer of Thor, and uh, a really cool crowbar. Alright, so, yeah, and if you make, if you feel your house full of your things, like your artwork, even if it's just a bunch of taped together photos that you've collected, or even cut out of magazines or newspapers or things like that, um, well, you know, a good place to get those is uh, apartment recycle bins. I always like swing by, there's like a couple apartments that I walk by, and they have uh, recycling bins. And I look in there and there's like REI catalogs and you know all these different like travel ma travel magazines and I'll just grab like a handful and leaf through them. Sometimes they're even pertinent to my area and I'll have like um, hikes and stuff like that I could go on. 
All right, so enough of your house. Enough of your house. Um, though you oh you mentioned you have that exercise machine. Like exercise, if you're if you're if your mind the the body is the seat of the mind. The body is the seat of the mind. And your mind's gonna want a comfortable place to sit down, Jen, and uh, do some thinking. So you're gonna have to put some effort into your body to make it that temple that it needs to be so you can have uh, some healthy, constructive thoughts. Uh, I hope there's not too much wind. So you, you have to hit that. You have that exercise bike or whatever. You have to get on it for 30 minutes. Just reward yourself. Like if you don't wanna do it, just say, well, after I do 30 minutes on this, I'll reward myself with anything. A foot rub, give yourself a foot rub. Um, or a hot shower, like after this, I won't take a shower until I do 30 minutes on that, that kind of thing. Then reward yourself. Get your body into a, a condition where uh, your mind is, is no longer distracted by it. Which, you know, might mean going for a walk. You might not like going out, but, you know, small, small walks might lead to larger walks. Um, might lead to more comfort, more exposure to something that makes you uncomfortable. It gets less uncomfortable as time goes on. Though it might not seem like that at first. Uh, you mentioned uh, work. Um, there, I had a, a steady job for a long time and it was just the economy was starting to go down and people were like, it was kind of a convenience job and so people stopped using it. And so I started taking temporary jobs. A lot of them were on, under the table, which makes it makes you know you can't really put that on a work record. Uh, you can, um, but someone can't call up your employer and say, "Hey, I understand you were paying this guy illegally under the table. How do you do?" Um, so, while working temp jobs and under the table jobs, I also volunteered. And uh, the thing is, there is like. You go in and volunteer at the pet center, uh, taking care of animals, the, uh, the pet shelter. And I'd go in there like maybe once a week. And uh, it looked like uh, their records showed I'd been a volunteer for a month. You know, but it's really, I went there four times. And I told employers like, they're like, oh, you volunteered at the following places for uh, you know one month, two months. And I'm like, well, yeah, but it's not like I was an employee there, but I did appreciate, I had to, free time being between jobs and uh, it was nice to be able to give back to my community when I had that extra time that's how I spent my time not only looking for work but working and actually one of the temp jobs I did was uh, delivering groceries to people and uh, they had a car to use and they offered me a job so like not only would I have you know got a job out of that if I wanted to work there but there I also would have had a car during the day the entire day so I could have I could have done my own shopping or taken my dog to the park or something like that if I wanted so but the important thing I mean oh actually the most important thing you talked about is uh oh man hold on Jen Jen, I think I'll start filming right before I go down this really slippery slope with a coffee cup in one hand. Uh, so the last most important thing you talked about is wanting to be happy. Happiness comes from within. And uh, I would, anybody that tells me that, I'd punch them in the nuts. Um, I mean, I know what they're talking about. They're trying to be helpful. Um, but what's with the whole desire, the whole passion, the whole I gotta be happy? Well, I gotta be happy. I deserve happiness. <laughs> yeah, you do. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like you want to be happy all the time. That's ridiculous. Happiness should be something that you're open to. That just happens. Same thing with sadness. Those things kind of come and go. Uh, our desire to be happy all the time is part of the problem that makes us sometimes unhappy all the time. Like, you know, we want to we want to clutch on to one that not having it makes us be the other. I want to be happy so much I'm making myself unhappy. So I say be calm. Why the hell not just be calm? Just be calm. Just be relaxed, calm, 
and open to things like happiness and sadness and know that when the happiness comes along uh, sometimes unhappiness comes along and then you're confident that well all things return to calm you know that's the, that's the, the middle setting the neutral ground uh, yeah and you know what I could make myself happy um, I could make myself unhappy I could watch Fiddler on the Roof <laughs> I could cry um, try making yourself calm I think it's much harder and uh, it seems to me that if making yourself calm is harder than making yourself happy um, maybe the strength to be calm allows you the uh, the vulnerability to be happy and sad geez I might write that down all right Jim you get a long video you sure do anyway thinking about you Things are good.